My name is Joe Hinkle. This training video is on a Hinkle controller configuration for output settings. Now before we go into output settings, I just want to quickly go back to E131 and make you, if you haven't watched this video, watch it because what we're going to talk about now is how the numbers in these two columns are used to properly map your X light show so that the proper lights over off your controller work properly. So in this particular configuration, in this demo, I'm using a Hingspix Pro and I have three driver boards. I have a long range board that is driving ports 1 through 16 and I have two spy boards. One board drives ports 17 through 32 and the other 33 through 48. Now, my terminology when I say a port, I'm saying a port is an actual, it's usually a green Euro connector that, is a, that your string of pixels attach to. So that string or that port has a maximum capability of driving 680 pixels. So your implementation may only want to drive 50 pixels or 100 pixels, but the capability exists to drive up to 680 pixels. Let's look at the long range. Normally, if you, depending on what you're driving your controller for, you may have gotten a long range controller to drive a light or to drive a star or to drive some arches or mini trees or something of that nature. Um, a long range has four output jacks. They look like, I'll use a techie term, an RG45 jack, a jack that you would put an ethernet cable connection into. Do not put an ethernet uh, cable into that. The cable is a is an ethernet cable with an ethernet jack, but it is not connected to the ethernet, okay? It actually contains information, or it will, tr it is used to transmit information for four ports. So the first one would be port one, two, three, and four. Each one of these, as I said, can deliver or can illuminate 680 pixels. Now, on a long-range differential, I've divided this into four groups, representing the four connectors that are available on the output uh, driver board. Okay? Now, there's a new... I won't, I'll, I'll briefly talk about this, this green here. There'll be a complete video on it, but this driver long-range driver will typically have at its end a receiver board and that receiver board will typically have four of those green euro connectors that you'll connect strings to. The other option be besides having a single board terminator is to have a smart long-range receiver board and a smart long-range receiver board has one input and two outputs. So you can actually connect multiple output ports, excuse me, multiple smart receivers, and you can daisy chain them all over the place. Since they have one in and two out, you can make all kinds of tree structures. There'll be another video on that, but the way you bring that up is you end up clicking here, and this identifies different smart receiver boards. Again, this will be covered in a different video. But for this video, what's important for all drivers is the start channel. Remember over here, these channels? The start channel is which one of these channels does this board start pulling its data for? I use the analogy over in the E131 that you had a jigsaw puzzle as a picture and X lights 
broke up each of those, broke up that big picture into each of the little jigsaw pieces, transmitted those jigsaw pieces via E131 packets, each packet being identified by a universe, and each packet containing some data, the number of the amount of data referred to as the number of channels. And then it got laid down into the controller, into a picture in the controller. But now our job is to take that picture that's in the controller and get it out on the lights. Well, this tells me where I'm going to get the data. Now, all of these don't have to be used. As an example, let's say that we're actually looking at a start channel. Yeah, let's just go over here. Let's just say that our smart receiver is actually, uh, let's just make this 17. And we're going to say that's our arches. And we've got 150 uh, channels, which means we have 50 pixels in our arch. And if you notice, let's go back. It started on channel 2251. So for this particular one, this start would be 2251 because that's where it starts. Now, I'm only going to do 50 pixels, which is all going to be just in one of this. So I'm going to recommend you come up and you do zero here, set number of pixels that makes them all zero, and then you turn around and say, hey, I just want to make that one 50, and now you do an auto calc. And what it's done is it's properly identified based on your start channel, based on your pixel count, it's properly identified all of these fields. Now, if you notice, the start channel is the next one from the end channel. Let us just say that we've got uh, five pixels here, per se. And uh, we'll say this one here is uh, five pixels also. If you notice, if I hit auto calc, it'll properly calculate these. If you're going in and manually doing this, the other thing you can do is for start channel, if you hit minus one, it will perform the auto calc for you for that particular one. Notice how it's changing. This is 2430. This should actually be 2431. It's not. If I make it a minus one, it will. So the only reason I'm showing you that is if you have to go in and hand manipulate this, minus one in the start field will take a look at the previous end channel and add one automatically. Best thing to do is just do an auto calc and it'll do it automatically. In our particular example, these are non-existent. So we'll just make them zero, do an auto calc, and now it's set up properly. So that's kind of the insight for the long range. Let's the same thing for the spy. Now remember, what we what we just suggested was over here on E131 that, well, see, I didn't save it. But we said Universe 17 down here was going to the uh, ports 1 through 16, which was our long-range differential. The, these numbers are set up by default. They're not necessarily associated with what's required to map into your X lights. Matter of fact, they're probably going to be wrong because, again, they're default values. Uh, from our example over here, we're just assuming we have a tree. Our tree's coming in in universe 1 through 16, and it's delivering 50 pixels, or 50, 150 universes, which, excuse me, 150 channels or 50 pixels, and it's mapping into the controller like this. The important thing is our tree starts at controller 1. So if our tree was connected 
to port 17 through 32, this has to be channel 1. We're already set up for 50 pixels, so we do an auto calc. And now all of our start and end channels are correct. Okay? Um, all the string types are WS2811 or different families. The, the controller uh, supports 2011s, 2812s, 13s, 15s, 17s, all of those. Uh, here's some of the techie stuff you can get into. Um, usually forward and reverse. Uh, it's much better to take care of this, let's say, within X lights. This is kind of uh, uh, a carryover of the old time, like at, back at 20, uh, 2009 and 10, where the controller made it easier to do forward and reverse. Now it's just much easier to do it in the sequencer. This is RGB order. Most strings are going to come where channel 1 is red, channel 2 is green, channel 3 is blue. But if you find you have a string and you go in my test setup and you say make it red and it comes out a different color, more than likely the LEDs on your string are not responding to red, green, and blue in that order. So this allows you to change the order or which LED is delivered by each color. A null pixel is a pixel that you really don't want to light. It just means it's kind of like a retransmitter. It allows you to get further down the wire with the data without really doing any illumination. Um, I will suggest you strongly look at brightness. Um, a lot of people just leave brightness at 100%. 100% is going to consume a great deal of current from your power supply. And quite frankly, um, the amount of illumination you see by your eye may not be that significantly different. You may want to try to come in, depending on how far your tree or your display is away from where you're going to have people viewing it, you may want to come down and select 30 or 40 or 50 percent. You'll dramatically drop the current draw on your power supply. The illumination will drop by your eye, but it's not a linear drop. So dropping by 50 percent brightness will dramatically drop your current, but not necessarily uh, cut your brightness down in half. So brightness is kind of a, a term here because your LEDs respond to the amount of current, which is not directly proportional to the illumination value that your eye is going to perceive. So what I'm suggesting, especially if you're developing and you've got your pixels in your front room, you don't want 100% brightness or you'll blind yourself. Come down and pick 15 or 20% brightness, and when these pixels start illuminating, you know, on your garage floor, your basement floor, or your front living room floor, um, the whole world won't light up. Uh, your eyes will love you a lot better. Okay? Gamma is kind of a techie thing. I won't cover it here. If you're getting into gamma, you'll kind of know what that is. Um, once you make any changes, again, you want to hit save this page. If you go off this page without hitting save, everything you've done here is going to go back to where it was before. Uh, as I covered on the spy, it's real easy here to come in and change the number of pixels per port just by putting it here and, uh, and clicking there. Here's an identifier that again talks about the minus one that I tried to show you earlier. Um, Hope I haven't confused you. The intent was to try to let you know that the biggest thing on this page is proper setting of the start channel. That has got to be the number one thing you walk away with. When you're dealing with a port, it's not a universe. You've got to go back to your E131 and see what start channel you want to start driving from that particular port. That concludes 
this training, well, wait, not yet. We still got DMX up here, okay? Under DMX, you can identify whether DMX transmissions are alive. Uh, on your controller, you've got a, uh, a three-pin Euro connector if you're dealing with a Hinkspix Pro. If you're dealing with an Easy Light, you have both an RG45 jack and a Euro connector. Uh, on the Euro connector, there are uh, three pins on the Hinkspix Pro. There's a ground, a data plus, and a data minus. Uh, you do not need the ground. The ground is there just for the techies that need or want to use it. Uh, what's really required are the plus and minuses. You need to correctly connect the plus to your uh, DMX RS4 485 transmission line. If you get plus and minus reversed, uh, your devices on your DMX 485 line won't respond. Um, very quickly, you tell me what universe contains your DMX data here. Within that universe, remember universes contain 500, a possible of 512 uh, data bytes or data packets starting from 1 to 512. So you tell me where I start in this universe, what number do I start at? It'll typically be one. And then how many channels of that 512 is the controller really responsible for uh, processing? So when you activate this, the controller is going to say, hey, where in this big memory map, okay, does universe A go? In universe A, what channel do I start with? And then how many channels do I process? And that's when I'm going to end up pumping out the DMX port. The last thing is output timing. Normally, you should never, never, never get in here. This is really set up. By default mode, we're in mode A. Uh, mode A is probably the timing that is going to fit most all of your controllers. Only if you have a pixel string where you're showing some pixels that are kind of always white or always kind of bouncing around, then you might want to come in and change this default timing mode. Uh, I have found some strings are a little more particular as far as what the uh, data rate and what the bit timings are. And this allows you to pick two other ones besides that. Um, that now finally concludes this training video on output settings for a Hinkle controller.